with Kathleen Reinhardt from Oxford Brookes University to talk about something that comes up all the time, which isn't carbs, fats, eating after 6 p.m., which is actually sleep, which is often people will say this is like the boring part because it's everyone knows it, but I feel like no one really wants to talk about it because it's just one of those things where there's no kind of quick fix, simple pill. But yeah, so if you could just introduce yourself and just let us, everybody know kind of who you are and what you do. Yeah. Um, so as Matt said, I'm Kathleen Reinhardt. I'm at Oxford Brookes University in the Department of Anthropology and Geography. I'm just finishing my PhD right now where I've been researching sleep and thermoregulation on a nocturnal primate. Um, they're called solorses, and I watched them for about a year and a half in the wild to get an idea of how they respond to cold temperatures and also light and how that affects their sleeping patterns. Yeah, cool. And most people are thinking, like, how does that relate to humans right now? So why, why does that animal, if you like, what can we actually extrapolate from that? And, and kind of what have you found, like, in summary? Uh, so we can get an idea of the evolution of sleep towards humans because slow lorises are one of the earliest living primates. So if you look at the primate order, they're at the furthest evolutionary distance from us, but they show us how we could have gotten to the sleep patterns that we have now as humans. And what I have mainly found for them is that they are strongly influenced by temperature changes in their sleep patterns, okay. but the biggest driver is actually light. So sunrise and sunset really determine their intrinsic sleep needs and their what's called monophasic sleepers, which is what we are as well. So you notice that as humans, we tend to sleep in one large bout for the most part. Mm. Um, you know, we go to bed sometime after sunset, we wake up after sunrise or around that fluctuation. Slow lorises are the opposite. So they go to bed uh, when the sun rises and they wake up when the sun sets. So they're true nocturnal primates, but they also experience disruptions of sleep where the temperatures change while they're sleeping. And then during their active period, they then catch up for that lost sleep by napping. So every single solaris that we observed was found to nap. Um, and they do this to make up the cumulative amount of sleep need that they require to function every day on a physiological level and their cognitive abilities. So to put that into perspective for humans, if I got four hours sleep because the babies were up and I had to be up early, I would nap in the afternoon to make up for it or sleep longer the next day. Yeah, exactly. If, if, I, if I wasn't kind of socialised, I didn't have stuff to do, I would just make up for it. Yeah, you would experience what's called sleep pressure. So your body would feel a need to sleep more. And if you went to take a nap and didn't set an alarm, you would just kind of sleep until you more or less needed to wake up. Cool. Yeah. Well, so on before we go into that, you mentioned about like light. So sunrise and sunset. This time of year, yeah, so especially with a, a lot of the ladies I work with, they'll start to say, you know, like, and, and me included as well, like the mornings it's harder to get up because obviously we still get up and it's dark and then we get home and it's dark, but we still expect to function because stuff is there to be done, be it exercise in the morning or evening or, you know, doing stuff with, with people. Um, but people feel tired. Should, is that just a normal thing or should someone be, because I find that people wrongly really, I guess, beat themselves up for feeling tired when actually technically that's, we have a biological circadian rhythm and that's kind of how we are. I don't know. What's your yeah. take on that? I think it's definitely a natural feeling for sure. Um, especially for primates. There are some primates that really change their patterns that have. So if you're living in the wild, for example, you don't have curtains or anything to change your lighting scenario. They're going to respond entirely to the changes in sunrise and sunset as the year goes on. So you'll notice that their waking up shifts 
throughout the annual year. So it's super normal for everyone to feel that and for it to be harder to get out of bed. So, yeah, so what is there any, so would there be any drawbacks, do you feel like, in terms of getting up in the dark? Like would, I guess an alarm, using alarm. So do, when you do your study, when you do your studies, are you, do they ever, are they ever woken up by things that aren't kind of, you know, so have you ever witnessed anything that's like a bit out of the blue and it wakes them up and then how do they react to that? Do they act differently, I guess? Um, behaviorally, they don't react much differently aside from their naps. So if they're woken up in the middle of their sleep patterns, the longer that disruption is, the longer they'll nap later during their active period. Okay. So that gives so you the, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. You um, she, every Solaris naps for at least uh, 30 minutes throughout their period of activity. But if they, say, had three hours where they woke up in the middle of their sleep, then they often will, almost the same amount of time, will nap for to balance that out. Yeah, that's, that's good to know and actually justifies my own napping and the fact that a lot of people feel guilty for having naps, yeah. which, like, you know, people have maybe from their upbringing been told that, you know, you, sh you should be doing something, you shouldn't sit down and, you know, it's lazy to do that. And actually, when we're tired, we haven't got much energy. Perhaps if we don't nap, we then look for food <laughs> quite often when we're not necessarily hungry. Oh, I think it just went a bit then. Sorry. Sorry, back. For a second. <laughs> Did you catch that? Um, I missed the last sentence or two. So um, I was just saying when people are maybe tired and actually maybe they've got that sleep pressure, which we're going to in a minute, maybe they need a nap or feel like they could nap, but they feel guilty for doing it. So instead, sometimes that's where eat bad eating habits can come in. They pick things that maybe they don't want, like sweet food, sugar foods, to give them that pick-me-up. But then end up feeling guilty anyway, rightly or wrongly. Um, so I guess I'm just just reiterating the message that napping is a very natural thing to do, and it's not lazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm a huge advocate for naps, and I used to also feel very guilty about napping, um, and would feel like I needed to kind of power through. But naps are good as long as you na don't nap for too long. That then you throw off your natural need to sleep later in the day. Because okay. if you sleep for, say, five, if you took a nap for five hours, it would really decrease your sleep pressure to go to bed in the evening. So you don't want to do that, like, right before, say, supper time or anything. Mm. So how long would you say? Is there an optimal time? <laughs> I, I think it depends on the individual. So it's a little hard to say. But, I mean, personally, I have, like, my, what I've noticed to be my good nap threshold. Um, but again, it would vary per person. Um, I usually nap for maximum kind of an hour, but okay. again, that's for humans isn't exactly my expertise. So I kind of feel a little guilty saying too much about that. Yeah. 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 So as you often hear, I oh, don't have longer than 20 minutes. Mm, I mean, is that kind of hard to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That's what I, you hear a lot. You know, is there anything around that? Do you know? Um, I don't know any researchers that have found that to be exact. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, again, I think it really does depend on the individual, how long they've been awake, what time they want to go to bed. Yeah. And I think 20 minutes is a nice idea, but I think it's quite hard to manage because within the time that you would actually fall asleep and then the type of sleep that you would get within 20 minutes and then to make sure that you wake up can be a bit a bit hard to manage I think yeah um so I yeah that's why I find one hour is quite nice because you know it gives me time to to fall asleep for that nap yeah, yeah. so then maybe by the time I actually am asleep it is only about 20 minutes but mm. for my alarm I always set it like at an hour okay yeah. and, and I mean obviously sometimes you don't have an hour would you still yeah. see some benefits though in terms of like because me personally I try to sleep for um or, or nap if you like for about uh -huh. I, I kind of set my alarm for like 15 minutes or so 20 minutes or so and it's more like almost like restfulness slash nap sometimes mm -hmm. i fall asleep sometimes i won't i might sleep for five minutes in that time um 
but obviously there's i guess there's still benefits of of doing mm-hmm. that is what i'm saying on that yeah absolutely um so similar to sleep there is something called rest rebound okay. so sleep rebound is what i was saying about catching up on sleep more or less it's when you know later when you go to bed you add some extra sleep onto it and you're rebounding on that lost sleep but they found a similar thing with animals that rest so for species that we don't necessarily know sleep it's kind of a bit of a gray area whether they're sleeping or resting we do see that rest rebound also has a huge influence on energy and performance and cognitive abilities of animals cool yeah i mean i know i can shut my eyes for five minutes and feel so much better it surprises me how much better i can feel in in five minutes yeah Um, yeah so um you mentioned about kind of sunset sunrise how does um so like obviously blue light and you know tv screens phones laptops play into this like do you feel there's that can be quite disruptive to our sleep pressure if you like yeah um absolutely there have been some studies that have found particularly with blue light so blue light is similar to what we experience when our body's going to feel like it should be awake so if you have blue light later in the evening your body might be a bit confused and think that you're still supposed to be awake even though you might need to sleep at that point so it can really throw off our natural circadian rhythms in that way yeah and do you think that's because i i often think you know that's it's quite a relatively new thing right in our you know the way of living how much light we're exposed to artificial light and whether that's having like that quite an effect on the quality of our sleep but if we, we know that sleep is probably you know one of the most important things you know we talk about diet all the time but actually no one there's no new like new sleep study really like that it like hits the headlines so much compared to like you know try this food try this ingredient um and i guess yeah like with the amount of light blue light we have then people struggling to get to sleep and then when they wake up obviously they're like oh i can't sleep the first thing someone grabs often is a phone and you know they have got these blue light light blockers now i don't know if you've seen them um yeah i don't know whether that how effective that is but um I guess it's still stimulation, isn't it? Even mm-hmm. if you're on your phone. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I mean, I've found since I've been reading a bit more on everything with blue light that as I've downloaded apps and stuff for my laptop, my phone, that it's helped me on a personal level. Yeah. Um, if not just to feel that pressure to go to sleep, because if I start doing work quite late in the evening, mm-hmm and I have the blue lights on, I find that I sometimes can kind of really buzz into work, but as you mentioned earlier, in that kind of unhealthy way, and then start eating really unhealthy foods yeah, and yeah. end up just eating like a packet of digestives or something while typing. Yeah. But now, while I've gotten um, these apps that kind of fix that and make natural lighting, so you set the times for when you want to go to bed, and then it mm. sets a natural light change on the laptop, and it makes me more aware of the time in Mm. in a positive way like as if like okay i should start winding down now and if i do need to do a bit of work a bit later than i would like to on my laptop at least it's still keeping me feeling natural more or less Mm. and i find that even my eating habits have gotten better yeah yeah and i think it's it's interesting because that that like tip right there if you like just to limit blue light is so simple but mm-hmm. it's not because it's not fun. It's not something you can just take. It's something you got to do. It's quite right. it can be quite hard, right? Because TVs, mm-hmm. you know, because TVs definitely don't have it. And I know some people have those blue locking, blue blocking, blue light blocking glasses. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you might just you know look a bit funny in the room there. But um, yeah, so it's so simple. But like I said, not enough of us really do it. I guess because even me, I I don't you know sometimes if I've got to do some work, I'll just do it um but quite often i know and it's, it's interesting because you said about sleep patterns i know that i'll be way more productive in the morning um if i just go to bed leave the work i've got to do but get up earlier 
uh-huh. I'm, I'm just my eating habits the, everything that you know i don't need like i'll get a cup of coffee and a tea and or whatever just other procrastinating things to push me through i'm just like on it in the morning so one of the questions i had was i'm a night owl is that could that be detrimental to my health like is that a problem like hmm. yeah what's your thoughts on that i don't think it's a problem as long as the sleep is still gained um so if you're a night owl and then you end up sleeping a bit later than most people in the morning or you end up napping later it's fine as long as it works for you because everyone has different sleep patterns. Um, I have a colleague that only needs about five hours of sleep a night and they're just like one of those people that kind of keeps, keeps going, but doesn't get tired. And then meanwhile, um, I feel like I need like a pretty solid seven and then sometimes nap here and there. And, you know, it really goes by the person, but as long as, yeah, as long as they're getting sleep, I would say it's absolutely fine. I, when I was studying soloruses in the wild, I had to become nocturnal and I had to shift entirely so that I could observe their natural behaviors since they woke up at sunset and went to bed at sunrise. So I was sleeping from about uh, 8 a.m. until maybe 4 p.m. or so. And yeah, it was a very different environment. And it's it's hard to shift, but once you get comfortable in it, Mm. it's totally fine. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Did you feel any differently in that? Because I, I work with a few people who do shift work. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously that a lot, there's quite a lot of research in, in shift pattern work and, and it being quite detrimental in some areas um, in terms of like, mm-hmm. hang on, I just went there. Did you hear that? I think it just broke up a little bit. Yeah. Are you back? Can you yeah. Bro- well, 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 yeah. yeah. So shift, shift workers. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. With some kind of quite, detrimental effects on like sleep and and how much sleep they do get um yeah so i guess again it's just coming back down to so would you say that as long as they get the sleep in it doesn't matter but i guess the quality of the sleep's an issue if they're not maybe yeah blackout curtains stuff like that yeah sleep quality has a huge influence of course um Maybe if they use sleep masks or or something like, like an eye mask to really keep the light out because the light's really gonna fragment the sleep if they have natural light coming into their windows if they need to sleep during the day. Um, yeah, and I guess consistency as well makes a big difference. So it's when you really, if you had to change between diurnal to nocturnal sleeping patterns every other day, that's gonna kind of throw you off a bit. So I guess trying to make things as consistent as possible. Yeah, and that's that's. I know that's not what a lot of people want to hear, but uh, that's just because I, I saw something not too long ago. Actually, I was I was at a um, conference um, and there was a Q and A, and someone asked, like, you know, what's the best thing thing you can recommend to help with like shift patterns? I'm tired a lot. Da da da. And, they, and their response was, "Don't do sh- don't work shifts anymore." <laughs> Which, yeah, but obviously some people kind of need to etc and, yeah. and I guess consistency is going to be the key thing so maybe I guess yeah if they can have like you know at least nights in a row or days in a yeah. row week off but and that's yeah. something we're catching up yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah cool so you mentioned about temperature as well um mm-hmm. obviously that's yeah what's, what's around on temperature you said temperature can wait how about yeah. Effect? Mm-hmm. Um, so all animals have what's called a thermo neutral zone, and that's kind of the temperature that our body functions the best at physiologically that we're most comfortable in. So if you think about when in the summertime, if it's really hot, you might really struggle to go to sleep, or you might wake up in the night because you're too hot. That's because the temperatures have gone above your thermo neutral zone. So trying to keep temperatures as stable and within that range while you're sleeping is going to theoretically increase your sleep quality, uh, at least for primates. Yeah. Okay. And you you can kind of, because that that kind of does help back up Mm -hmm. quite a lot of research in humans as well with with regards to like sleep hygiene. So like we know Mm -hmm. that kind of having a bath, for example, before bed, like and then coming out and then your body naturally lowering its temperature likewise keeping your bedroom cool that's you know quite well known to be 
effective in that. Because um, I know we've, you know, if you've ever kind of left the heating on or something like that, and you've got up and you're just roasting hot at, you know, <laughs> 2 a.m. or something. Yeah. Um, no, that, that makes sense. So you mentioned about sleep pressure um, before. Like what, what are things that can increase sleep pressure? So say someone struggles to get to sleep. Um, yeah, what are things that we know in increases sleep pressure? Um, basically, the, the longer you awake, mm. the more sleep pressure you're going to experience. Um, it's called sleep homeostasis. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much it with that. I know some colleagues that study exercise as well, um, mm. although this is, hasn't been something that I've looked at. Um, and they're currently trying to see if more physical activity during the day is going to increase your pressure of sleep so if you think about it, if you go out for like a hike all day and then you go to sleep like you lie down in bed you really almost kind of fall right asleep yeah yeah so but that's kind of what their hypothesis is um but yeah. i don't believe they've they've finished that yet they haven't finished it did you say the, the study no i okay. think they're they're still working on it okay yeah. cool yeah I, I mean it makes sense i guess like some people it, it can be quite stimulating but i guess as soon as you do sit down then you kind of do yeah. end up sleep I, yeah i mean and also you can relate it to different aspects because by exercising i guess there's a few other variables that we've talked about you know to say you exercise you might end up getting daylight in the process of it which might help mm. um and then <laughs> you're likely to have a bath then or shower before bed which can help with your temperature bringing down you might just relax more, not think about work as much, which is mm. distressful. So yeah, so yeah, there's, it's just coming in a kind of full loop, loop round in there, in terms of yeah. like bringing, bringing out all the, the temperature, you know, light that we know, um, and obviously exercise as well within that. Mm. There's um, just to add to that, yeah. there's quite a good study actually that's looked at kind of a combination of the exercise and lighting okay. um, by some researchers in Colorado, and they've looked at uh, people going for the weekend, going hiking and camping um, without their blue light electronics and kind of found that doing that reset the circadian rhythms of people that live in places that have very extreme different lighting environments, such as uh, in Finland, you know, where you have the really long light summers and then the low light winters. So that kind of took both aspects of the light and the physical activity yeah. and fixing that. Well, it's fascinating because, yeah, because I went camping in the summer um, mm. and I was obviously where you, you're just outside and then the light's just naturally dimming. Um, I could have went to bed at about half eight, eight and just, I thought it was, you know, everyone always says, if you go camping, you're like, what's the time? Half eight? Like, Is that it? Like, I thought it was like 10, everyone's just tired because you just sat around mm. outside. I guess temperature's cooling, but in the summer, obviously. Um, yeah, so that no, I do. I I would definitely vouch for that. Um, in terms of that, um, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me just check if I've got any other questions on on that. So I had quite a few in, and obviously I know some of them. Kind of, it's difficult to extrapolate completely with it. Have you got any anything else planned in terms of, um, like researching within around the sleep area? Um. Hmm. I, I'm looking to stay a bit in the sleep research area and looking more into what I was saying about the thermal neutral zone, um, mm -hmm. but looking more into species that live in high altitude mountains that hibernate and seeing how they get their sleep need and also manage their metabolism by hibernating. So that's kind of what I'd, mm. I'm going to dive into a bit further now. So. Cool. Yeah, so I'm, I'm intrigued also. How did you conduct your research? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm intrigued to go into that. I'm, I'm quite intrigued. Yeah. So I went out to West Java, Indonesia, and moved into um, a small village with my research project, which is um, uh, directed by my supervisor, actually, called the Little Fireface Project. And they focus on solar earth conservation, but study some other nocturnal animals. And we lived in a house in the village, and we would go out every night um, and find solar horses using what's called um, radio telemetry. So the lorises were almost like a, a like a dog collar, 
and then it has an antenna in it. So then we can use an antenna and radio frequency to figure out what each individual is to figure out who they all are. And then we would just follow them throughout the night using red light because this way we didn't throw off their circadian rhythms and they are what's called monochromatic. So they can only see really in black and white and, and they don't see red light at all. Okay. So we would follow them using that and just record their behavior and also used um, accelerometers, which is similar to like your Fitbit, yeah, for example. Yeah, yeah. And it just measures their locomotion and the frequency of the locomotion. And then using that, we can extrapolate whether they're active or inactive and we validate it with the behavioral observations as well. Okay. It'd be, it'd be fascinating to see, because I don't really know much about mm -hmm. them, but it'd be fascinating to see about their movement in their sleep. And yeah. Yeah, they're right. really cool animals. Um, they, they have an extra vertebra in their spine. So it's like watching like a little furry yogi moving through the forest in a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. So um, I think that's everything I had um, that was kind of relevant with this. And I think if you just kind of sum it up, it just reinforces kind of the fact that well, one, we shouldn't be beating ourselves up if you feel tired. Like something I say quite a lot is like, feel your feelings a bit. Like in terms of, you know, we often say, oh, I feel tired. And instead of just asking yourself, you know, what does that mean? Well, I should probably have a nap, have a sit down, at least shut my eyes. We just kind of try and fight it and go, I shouldn't feel tired. Why am I feel feeling tired? Beating ourselves up, wasting energy, and actually end up kind of poor eating habits, like we said already, um, and turning to food with that. Um, yeah, and then you've obviously got the lighting that we talked about. I know it's boring and it's not, not this like, you know, one trick supplement or anything, but yeah, like lighting, dimming, blue light, you know, the ph most of the phones should do that, do it now. So I guess other than that, it's, it's kind of looking at how you can look at temperature as well, making sure that you kind of keep the bedroom kind of cool um do you know anything about like what the optimal t temperature is and anything like that um i don't know what it is in humans really um but it's usually if you think around our natural body temperature it's always going to be within a threshold of that in either right. direction so as long as we're not going too far away from the normal human body temperature you could think of it in mm. in terms of that because there's so many gadgets now. There's like obviously the you can put like mats underneath your your bed and whatnot, or sheets mm -hmm. if you like, which goes warm, cold, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounds quite sounds quite good actually. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I think that's everything. Have you got anything that you want to kind of add to that um, that you think might be helpful in terms of sleep? Because it is one thing that I find isn't talked about that much. Um, uh -huh. You know, we talk about comfort eating all the time, you know, food, um, getting exercise in, but and I want more energy. But often we don't look at sleep. It's quite ignored. Um, but I guess they kind of, it is kind of a catch-22 a bit because sometimes, like what we've said already, maybe exercise helps with sleep pressure. So instead of sleeping to mo if you have more energy, it's exercise helps with sleep, maybe maybe <laughs> it's, it's hard to put it around that way but yeah, yeah it's hard to kind of say concrete with these things but i would say i would just add don't fight the need to sleep um if yeah exactly like you said if you feel like you need to sleep then sleep because your body definitely needs it and even though you might think i need to get this done so a nap would be a bad idea or going to bed later would be a better idea you're better off getting the sleep that you need and then you'll be more efficient when you wake up from your sleep yeah and that reminds me is i just looked at my flowery cup to see an empty coffee yeah. do you know much around in terms of like caffeine do you have any like recommendations around that like i personally like try and avoid it after like 3 p.m or so um but i don't know if you if you have any recommendations around that Unfortunately, um, I'm a terrible uh, caffeinator, so I don't know if I'm a good one for this. Yeah. Um, yeah, we often will talk about in the lab how for people who study sleep, we all have some pretty bad habits, actually. And yeah, so 
I don't think I should probably talk yeah. about coffee consumption. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I, I drink a lot of it. But the funny thing that I find is that it doesn't actually, although I, I do try not to have it later in the day, because uh -huh. I, I feel that maybe it will, well, according to what it does, it should maybe reduce my quality of sleep potentially. But uh -huh. I don't have, my caffeine threshold seems pretty good, as in I could have a coffee and go straight to bed. I'm kind of similar with that actually, but it might just be because we consume so much that yeah, yeah. yeah. But some some more recent studies have found that, which I was very happy about, that it's not that bad to have uh, multiple cups of coffee during the day. Uh, yeah, so I was very oh, excited yeah. about that one. Yeah, <laughs> let's just let's just focus on that though. So drink coffee, nap when you want, don't mm -hmm. fight it. Sleep, yeah, and continue yes. to drink coffee. I think that's and a good message. So sleep and drink coffee. Yeah. And then <laughs> exactly. you yeah. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, I think that's everything. Thanks a lot for that. Um if there's any anyone has any questions or anything, um, fire them over to me and I can always forward them on if there's anything that um, yeah, so. So you can help with as well. Perfect. And then hopefully we'll have uh, more sleep researchers on in the future. Perfect. Thanks for that. Um yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Just, um, stop sharing that. Brilliant.